Project Castaway recently had an update and here are five things that I'd like to highlight and a few things I'd like to see changed to give us a better experience. I'm gonna have a full list of the updates down in the description below if you'd like to check it out. If you're not familiar, Project Castaway is a game developed by Martin Pole Inc. It's a survival crafting game set in the Pacific Ocean. You can sail the ocean, hunt, explore unique islands, and gather resources as you fight for survival. It's currently in early access. That information is going to be down in the description below as well. Before we get started, my name is Mr. Miko. Enjoy the video. And make sure you stick around for the end of the video for some bonus footage I got for you. Something I'm almost positive will never happen again. The game glitched and created something that I think would be so cool to see in the game, but I doubt it'll ever happen because it's just, it's, it's just never going to happen. But I'm so happy to be able to share it with you here. Starting with number one, projectiles can now penetrate flesh. This is something that I mentioned in the pros and cons video that I made about Project Castaway. I'll put a card for it up here if you haven't seen it yet. I think it goes without saying, projectiles penetrating flesh adds to the immersion of the game. I figured it was going to happen eventually. I'm super pumped it happened now. I think it's a great update. Muy bueno. Number two, there is now an oxygen UI for when you're swimming underwater. Project Castaway is already leaning towards not holding your hand, so this is one of those things that I think adds to a good experience with the game. Here's something that I think could make the game a bit different. If you're the type a person that would prefer not to have this interface, maybe the devs can make something like this optional. I think there's a place for mechanics like this. For example, the Metro series does this beautifully, especially like in Metro Exodus. If you haven't played that game in Metro Exodus, you have to put on a mask in certain areas. It doesn't really tell you when you need to change out your filter, but your character starts to breathe heavier, which indicates it's time to change that out. <gasps> So I think there's a place for this kind of thing, but I also think it needs to be done right. I like that they put an oxygen UI in the game, but I also think doing something like making this optional could really make this game stand out a bit more and add to its difficulty. Before we move on to number three, consider liking the video and subscribing if you're enjoying this content. I'm a small channel, so your support means a lot to me. Now let's get right back to it. Moving on to number three, which is one of my personal favorites, but also makes me slightly sad, is the seagulls diving through the ground is no longer a thing. I loved seeing these little sky rats glitching through the floor, but it was short-lived. The bird meat also falling off the campfire rocks has also been updated too. These are just little things, little updates. The birds only fly now. No more glitching through the floor. I'm personally gonna miss it. Speaking of bird meat, number four, the food now can burn and spoil. I'm not sure how I feel about this. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. I think it adds to the immersion, but also sometimes too much immersion can also be a bad thing. For example, I just want to play a survival game. I want to build shelters. I want to build boats. I want to explore. I want to see things. I don't want to spend all my time time hunting and cooking unless hunting can give you different things like clothing or skins. For example, hunting a rare leopard could give you a rare leopard jacket or rare leopard boots. I work just like all of you. I'm sure you all have jobs too, and I can't play games all day. I wish I could, but unfortunately I can't. Sometimes I just want to build stuff and explore places, and I feel like I don't want to spend all my time just hunting and cooking, and this is something that I ran into in other survival games. You'll spend hours prepping to go to another island or to explore a cave and then be done playing games because you spent all day prepping to to get to that next thing. Like, I don't want to spend all my time doing that. There is something that I think could make this a better experience besides removing that mechanic entirely, like in Sunken Land, adding different ways to cook your food. Like in Stranded Deep, for example, you can cook food over an open fire, over a hobo stove, or you can smoke your meat. Smoked meat tends to last longer before spoiling. You still have to worry about it, but not as much. Moving on to number five, they've added old tires and barrels throughout the map. This is required to build raft bases. I absolutely love this, but I also don't want to see this fall short. Very similar to how Stranded Deep does this. Now, if you're not familiar with Stranded Deep, you can use things like barrels, tires, and boat buoys to make raft bases, but that's it. Nothing else. You can build a hobo stove with the barrel, but beyond that, there is nothing else you can do with that. In real life, there's so many things that you could use a barrel for. One thing that comes to mind, using a barrel to store water is the first thing that I think of. Also, in the game, you can carry the barrels by hand, which makes sense, but what happens when you find a barrel on a different island? How can you bring it with you to your home base? I would love to be able to tie a rope to it so you can bring it with you. I would also love to be able to put the barrel on my boat for added storage, things like that. But I don't know, let me know what you think they could do with these barrels too. Before you go, I wanted to show you this cool glitch that happened when I was getting the footage for this video. The game loaded me under the map and then made it look like there is a giant tree in the water. Like, how cool is this? I would love to see something like this in the game. We'd call it Miko Island. There would be monkeys and madness. <laughs> that sounds so stupid. <laughs> there would be monkeys and madness. I'm just going to keep that in the script. I think it would be so cool to see something weird like this in the game. But anyway, let me know what you think. That's been a few updates on Project Castaway. If you're new here, subscribe to keep up to date with everything that's new. I'm still a small channel, so your support means a lot to me. I'm Mr. Miko, and I'll see you in the next one.